When we think pipelines, we think an array of specialist equipment – welding, bending, coating, lowering, backfill, and trenching. Have you ever wondered why us pipeliners use such specialist equipment? Have you ever wondered if you could use this equipment in maybe another construction application? Bucket wheel excavators have been used in mining for the past century, with some of the first being manufactured in the 1920s. They are used in conjunction with many other pieces of mining machinery to move and mine massive amounts of overburden. While the overall concepts that go into a BWE have not changed much, their size has grown drastically since the end of World War II. Peter Kirsten, Peter Meisner, Eric Mutter are the three who invented the bucket wheel excavator. Deemed the largest land vehicle in history by the Guinness Book of World Records, the Bagger 293 is the single best digging machine man has ever built. Built in 1995, this bucket wheel excavator is 315 feet tall, dwarfing the Statue of Liberty, 738 feet wide, and weighs more than 31 million pounds or 15,500 tons. Given all of that size, you think it has a huge crew to run one, but you'd be wrong. Two people run the show. It's bus saw like 70 foot rotating wheel consists of a series of 20 buckets that easily and constantly slice into the earth's surface, efficiently removing thousands upon thousands of pounds of overburden. The waste soil mining operations need to remove before getting to the coal below. Once the dirt has been scooped up, it's transported by the conveyor belt running along the machine's massive arm to the much smaller dump trucks below that will carry it off. The Bagger 293 is the largest machine of its kind, but has several smaller siblings. The Bucket Wheel Excavator has been around since the 1920s. You can watch two videos of the 293 in action below. Pipelines are a mobile production factory where the workers and equipment move rather than the produced item. Efficiency is king when it comes to pipelines. Speak to any old pipeliner and he'll tell you how minutes matter in their respected area of pipeline expertise. I still remember the old bitch bosses talk about how many feet of trench they would miss out on just by stopping for a number two. Of course, it was a lot more colorful language and far too much information. Regardless, they were right. Minutes matter, and if you aren't counting the minutes or more importantly, meters per minute, then you'll lose. Efficiency is what pipelining is all about. As a pipeliner, it's your duty to find efficiency and strive for excellence. I've seen this fall over the years, but I'm desperately trying to bring the pride back to pipelines, bring the competition back between rival companies. It was a fantastic feeling when you got it right and gut-wrenching when you got it wrong. So with all that being said, why do we use bucket wheel trenchers for pipelines? Simply put, a bucket wheel trencher is efficient. In perfect conditions, a bucket wheel would expect to achieve around 3,000 meters per day. On a project in 2003, in Australia, our bucket wheels were achieving this type of production every day, each machine. Our excavators were averaging around 300 to 350 meters in comparable ground. Hence why I say, in the right ground conditions, a bucket wheel can replace up to 10 excavators. Removing equipment from an operation has so many flow-on effects, replacing 10 machines with one is huge savings in anyone's language. Let's start with the labor. While in the GCC, the labor is always said to be cheap, in comparison to say Australia, it's ridiculously cheap. However, the actual cost of the person is only a small portion of the overall cost. Look at your crew in terms of administration to onboard them. Look at it in terms of getting them to work in crew buses. Look at it in terms of accommodation and messing. Look at it in terms of flights. Even look at it in terms of increased project risk. Saving labor saves money, it's that simple. By reducing the labor needed, we can reduce our administration, our accommodation and messing, our transport requirements, and most importantly, with cheap labor, we reduce risk. Even in this part of the world, risk is actually being talked about and safety culture is slowly changing for the better. 
What's our first, first goal of risk hierarchy? Elimination. Removing equipment naturally removes fuel costs. But let's think of all the costs here. Yes, a bucket wheel trencher uses more fuel than, say, a 30-ton class excavator. In comparison, a modern bucket wheel would burn around 450 liters per day. A 30-ton cat excavator would burn around 100 liters less per day. That's around 3,000 liters of fuel per day, saving in comparison. Let's also look at the reduced crew vehicles or the reduced rooms in camp requiring generating power. This is also fuel savings. Every bit of fuel saved is money in the bank to a contractor, especially if you're in a part of the world where the fuel companies own the politicians. Maintenance, the dirty word that no project manager ever wants to talk about or allocate funds to, well, very rarely, in a project manager's world, machines run on fairy dust and unicorn piss. Now, all jokes aside, maintenance is a real thing, and if you get it wrong, it can cost a project tens of thousands of dollars very quickly. I'll be the first to admit that a bucket wheel trencher is a lot more costly to maintain than an excavator. However, when you only have one to maintain as opposed to multiple excavators, then it's reduced. The other advantage or disadvantage in some cases with one machine is that you only have one machine to stop to maintain, not multiple. Having said this, if this one machine was to break down, then everything stops, so to speak. Maintenance is critical on this equipment. Although it's definitely cheaper than the maintenance over 10 machines, a bucket wheel is still a very high maintenance machine. Have you ever done the sums on what over excavation is costing your job? If you build cross country pipelines or even cable for that matter, the figures will astound you. Let's say you have a gun crew and you only over excavate 0.1 of a cubic meter every lineal meter of trench. That's 10 cubic meters per 100 meters or 100 cubic meters per kilometer. With the figures above of 3,000 meters per day, that has saved you 300 cubic meters of over excavation in one day. A bucket wheel trencher eliminates costly over excavation. Now work on those same funds for your backfill. If you're using the in situ material, then the cost is just extra fuel and maintenance on the padding machine. If, however, you're using important material, then that 300 cubic meters can quickly turn to big dollars. Australia was around the 40 dollar AUD per ton in an urban area, 1.6 ton to the cube, that's 64 dollars per cube or $19,200 per day. Now, I know we don't do fill the trench to the top with important material. I am illustrating a point that over excavation has a dollar figure attached to it, and it's not cheap. Finally, a bucket wheel trencher will produce a better backfill medium depending on the conditions. For example, if you are digging a stickier type of material, an excavator will pull out large chunks of earth the bucket wheel in comparison will break down the material into much, much smaller pieces as the general nature of how it's continuously excavating material. Having a more usable product will significantly increase production when using padding machines. A padding machine will run more efficiently over a spoil of trench from a trenching machine than it will over an excavator trench. Either way you look at it, a trenching machine increases efficiency while reducing project costs. Now, a bucket wheel, although being used extensively in the pipeline industry, is fast becoming the machine of choice for many renewable projects like wind and solar farms. Efficiency is efficiency no matter what you're putting in the trench. If you're a project manager or project engineer and you're not looking for efficiency and cost savings, then I think you're in the wrong industry.